What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Internet Famous, the internet show about internet things. I'm your host, Devilor, and we've got a great show lined up tonight. But first, I need to introduce my ever-present co-host. Everyone, please, welcome back to the stage. It's AKA Mike B. How you doing, bud? Good. How you doing? Good. Good. I'm excited. I'm excited, too. I yeah. Have, I have all these fancy new buttons that I have to click to make fancy things happen on the screen, so... uh Hopefully. Are all of them record? Some of the, some of them some of them are in fact record. I have like good recording there, recording there. I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. Good. <laughs> uh, and as always, we do have a special guest for this week's show. Uh, you might remember her from Wow Insider, from uh, Wowhead, from Legendary. Uh, she then took over the World of Warcraft esports program before moving on to take on Twitch chat. Everybody. It's Olivia Grace. Hi, friends. It's been a while. It has it's been, been a while, while since I was on something resembling a video podcast with these two. <laughs> it absolutely. It has been. Uh, it has been quite some time indeed. Uh, so yeah, you actually are literally in charge of Twitch chat at this point. Like yeah. Sorry, the uh, audio cut out a bit for me there. So let's uh, just see whether your audio for a second. Ooh, there we go. Everyone's call cut out for a second there. That was a little crazy. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Yes. But hey, what would it what, wouldn't be a video podcast without some tech issues? But mm. yeah, assuming that your question was like, I do I actually own Twitch chat? Yes. Yeah, uh, I do. So all of you people, all of you people chatting in there, I own you. <laughs> that's like your that's like your assigned project, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm what's called at Twitch. I'm what's called a product manager. Mm-hmm. Um, so that basically means that. Um, I own the development and the like roadmap for various different things that we call products. Um, and a product is like, for example, Twitch chat is a product. Emotes are a product. Badges are a product. Um, chat uh, whispers are a product. Friends are a product. Presents are a product. Um, presence is wow. that like, hey, am I online? Am I offline? Am I like playing video game? So that's my list of stuff that I have to deal with at Twitch. So it's kind of a lot. I basically own um, all of the Twitch communications products. So, so uh, if you have a problem, with way the way that it works, don't shout at me, please. You wait, no, you wait. <laughs> did you wait? You broke up. Did you say hit you up on your personal Twitter account? Yeah, uh, right. Did I? That was, yeah, no. I, I guess you guys maybe misheard me. I did say so, uh, hit me up on my DM me. My DMs are open. Please send me your darkest <laughs> desires. So to basically, Twitch this chat. is exactly your fault, right here. All this of is them, this is fault. your fault. That's your fault. Yeah. This is my fault. All yeah. right. All right, good. Yes, Lactard, I am coming to you live from the Twitch headquarters in San Francisco. <laughs> so if my audio sucks, blame Twitch's internet. Wow. Well, already <laughs> throwing your employer under the bus. Ooh. Good job. Hey, good but job. your video and, uh, video and lighting looks great. So that's that's good. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I'm not going on, not sure what's going on with the uh, with the audio, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, pff, it's the internet. Whatever. It's fine. We didn't we didn't become internet famous by having things that worked. I don't know where i was going with that anyway <laughs> it was good so uh interesting week if you're a video game specifically if you're a video game that wants to stay active because a whole lot of them have not like just in this past week it's apparently either either um shut down or delay your product week in the video game industry um and a lot of actually really sad sort of stuff coming out of this um uh, for example, uh, Paragon is actually shutting down. They're going to be shutting down on April 26th. Um, and I don't, I don't actually even know. Did they, did they ever actually even come out of beta, or have they just basically? Is this, is this a, our release product is being shut down, or is this them canceling a planned release? I'm not actually sure. I don't remember if it actually ever came out of beta or if it was still considered to be in beta. I think that says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> I think we may be like already kind of zeroing in on the the source of the reasoning for the shutdown. Yeah, um, I don't know honestly. I feel like I feel like it did, but I I mean I I followed it for a little while. Like I was kind of actually I'm I'm particularly sad about Paragon because I was pretty excited about it. I was like I was like looking forward to that game, and then I guess like many others, I kind of like so much other good stuff came out that I then just it sort of slipped my mind, mm. um, and so I I kind of lost track of it. But I. I think it came out a beta i'm not sure uh either way uh they are definitely shutting it down they've given the the shutdown date of april 26th um and they put out a statement about it that was interesting for a number of reasons 
Hang on, I've got a Gary Gannon here for a second and adjust my microphone because it's not a it's not a video show if someone's not adjusting their microphone every five. Um, <laughs> I learned from the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so um, they uh, they put out a statement and it included the phrase uh, two phrases that I thought were really interesting. One being after careful a careful consideration and many difficult internal debates. We feel there isn't a clear path for us to grow Paragon into a MOBA that retains enough players to be sustainable. Which is an interesting thing to say when you're shutting down a product. Because it basically is them... Like, oftentimes when, when, a, when a product gets shut down, you'll see people come out and they'll say, they'll say things like, mm, Yeah, we weren't happy with the final product or something. Or we, 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 we weren't sure that it was the right game for our studio or something. And this is basically, they're just coming out and saying, Yeah, we didn't know how to make this work. We, we couldn't figure out how to make people like this, so we aren't going to. Uh, Why didn't they just go the battle royale route? I mean, that's clearly <laughs> the, the solution. They could have just done that and saved their game. Market. Enter another oversaturated market. Mm-hmm. It worked for Fortnite. Advice right there. It worked for Fortnite. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Actually, I take that back. They need, really well Ep- Ep- Epic needs two games in the in the field there. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. Like. Uh, they actually said said on uh, on Reddit. This is seven months ago. I looked it up here because uh, I remember them saying it and thinking that's dumb. We probably talked about it on Digihu actually, uh, but they specifically said that Fortnite will only be available in the Epic Games launcher. Uh, now, the only reason why I have the Epic Games launcher is for Unreal Tournament that I play like three times a year. <laughs> uh, obviously, other people probably have it for like other games, but it's not a it's it doesn't quite have the saturation uh, to I feel like to to basically. To, to maintain a game like Fortnite, a game that's not a flavor of the month style game, you know, um, it's uh, I'm sorry, not Fortnite, um, Paragon, Paragon, Paragon yeah. sorry. Um, but yeah, it's 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 just a. Them them basically not getting it out there to as many people as possible, I think, kind of definitely severed their uh, uh, their ability to basically help you get out in the market. Yeah, they also yeah, totally. go ahead. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, there's so much competition in that market. Like, there's so many other awesome MOBAs out there that, like, you've really got to maximize the penetration of any given MOBA, or you're just you're shooting yourself in the foot. I feel. Yeah, for sure. And, and Paragon was one of the games that had the sort of like, wait, isn't this just Overwatch problem that a lot of games had? And they were all in development at the same time, right? Like, it, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't like Epic went, "Hey, Overwatch, that looks good. Hang on, let's just do that," because the it would have been amazing if they were able to put together Paragon in the like week and a half that it was before <laughs> that actually happened. Um, yeah. but it's actually interesting. It, it, it reminds me actually, I was talking with, um, uh, Jimmy Wisenhunt, uh, a couple of TwitchCon, the first TwitchCon, um, uh, who was, uh, if you don't remember, he used to, now he's at Twitch, uh, working in partnerships, I believe. Um, but he used to be the head developer for H one Z one. Um, and he was saying uh, this was right after, um, Overwatch had been announced. And he was saying, yeah, man, we were we were thinking about making a game like uh, making a team based shooter at the time, but thought to ourselves, but what if someone like Blizzard makes one, too? What if they're having <laughs> the same conversation right now? We'll be screwed and we won't be able to com- keep up with that. Um, no. And clearly yeah. that was a very smart decision because H1Z1, even if it's not as popular as it used to be, it definitely went on to be a, a successful product, in my opinion. Um, Paragon, not so much. And it's it's actually interesting the lengths to which. They're actually going here um, to uh, uh, to shut down Paragon. They're not just saying, OK, yeah, sorry, guys, this this game isn't very good. So we're going to shut it down or this. We can't figure it's not even that they're saying the game isn't very good. They're just saying we can't figure out how to make this competitive. So we're going to shut it down. They actually said in their in their release uh, to try to make this right. Epic is offering a full refund to every Paragon player for every purchase on any platform. They're literally giving up 100% of the money that they've made off of this product, which is nuts. Which is like a really good guy way to go mm. about doing this. Like that that's it, that's kind of insane. And, or it's indicative of how much money they're making with Fortnite. <laughs> I was yeah, just going to exactly. say that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they can afford to make it. Yeah, but still, I mean, like, you know, they, they still didn't have to do that. They didn't have to do it that way. And I, I don't know, I, I kind of feel like, Declaring bankruptcy on something that isn't working is like a mark of a studio that kind of knows its stuff, right? Mm. Like that's one of the things that people always say about Supercell. Um, They talk about how Supercell makes really good games because they're super willing to just like kill games in their infancy when they're not really working out. Um, And that's how they end up with like, you know, the Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, which 
kind of the same game several times, but still like they're, they're cutting off the bad ideas early on. And as a result, they like filter through the good stuff. So I think that it's, it's a brave move and it's probably actually in some ways it's a good move. Maybe those people are now, I don't, do we actually hear what was happening to the employees who are working on Paragon or do we not really get any update on that? Uh, I don't think we know yet, but um, Epic, like they, they are a, a company that tends to, for the most part, try to take care of their people. So um, I, I suspect um, either a they'll find other other responsibilities for them, or they'll give them a good uh, uh, out package, severance package, or whatever. Yeah, it's Epic, um, not Crytek. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. So yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll do their best. <laughs> um, and it's not just Paragon actually that announced that they're closing down this week. Uh, another big one, um, which I, I think I think this one more people saw coming, um, mm-hmm. just because of the amount of time that it's been. Um, but gigantic is has also announced that that'll be shutting down um, and they just they said a very similar thing they said unfortunately it did not resonate with as many players as we'd hoped um, so again basically just going the route of we couldn't figure out how to make you like this so <laughs> we, we give up we're not going to do it yeah. um, they're actually um, they're not doing a full refund of everything because gigantic actually has been released for a while so people have had time to get their money's worth out of that um, they have spent that money. Yeah, exactly. Basically. But um, they are making, uh, I think it's pretty much everything in the game free up until the shutdown. The shutdown is on July 31st. So if you've never checked out Gigantic, um, maybe do right now, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Now's the time. Hop yeah. in. If there's yeah. ever, there's never been a time, then yeah. Could this be like the most epic bait and switch ever? They're like, we're shutting <laughs> it down, guys. It's going free to play. And they're like, a million people jump in and they're like, uh, surprise, loot boxes, <laughs> microtransactions, let's freaking go. I mean, maybe like if you're going to shut down your game, like it makes sense to have some, all right, well, we're going to shut it down. So let's see if we can just get a million people playing this game. And if that somehow works, maybe we can be like, wow, guys, you came out of nowhere and you really like this game now. So uh, we're not going to shut it down after all. Yay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yay. Community support, etc. It's not a bad idea, honestly. Um, Mike, yeah. I know yeah. that you were you were really uh, really involved with Gigantic for a while. Yeah, so uh, I knew Chris Chung. Uh, this is like back in 2012 or something. Uh, I met with him at GDC in like the lobby of I don't know some random hotel, right? Uh, and he uh, he busts out his laptop and we're and he's like, "You want to show me this this game that they're working on?" Uh, I think I had just started full time at Zam actually, so it may have been like 2013. Um, and he shows me this like demo video and then he shows me this, this client that he had, uh, this, this build that had like no textures or whatever, just to give me a feel of like how the game moves and everything. Uh, and, and at the time it was called the raid. That's what they're calling it. The concept of, uh, the concept of, uh, building up enough of whatever uh, for your team to launch a boss was always present. That was always a thing. Uh, having like synergy between like different skills and abilities, all this stuff was also a big thing they were pushing. Because this is like at the time when like Guild Wars Two had all those crazy things. Where it was like, yeah, fire arrows through my through my flaming wall, and there'd be fire arrows. It's awesome. Uh, and so like this was like the hottest thing uh, for uh, at, at that time. And so I was just like, man, this is great. Like you guys should totally put this thing out <laughs> as soon as possible, 2013, right? So like, <laughs> it just never happened. Like. They had they had such a great team. They were all like they 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 were all like real obviously very passionate about the game and everything and were like excited about it and everything. And I just feel like they just they just kept on delaying and delaying and delaying. And then Overwatch happened, uh, which for some reason people were like, oh yeah, over rip rip uh, rip gigantic. And it was like, well, it's like totally different game. <laughs> like, yeah, it's that like the goal. Sense of me because it's like gigantic compared to other games in the market. I I mean, correct me, B. I haven't played it. A ton i just like i read about it and i heard about it and i've like followed it but it's most similar to something like dauntless right like of other games that's, that are out there right now is that a good analogy or not really i couldn't tell you about dauntless actually okay. so i haven't spent a lot of time <laughs> well, it's like mm. a bunch Sorry. of people club together you have to build stuff up and go kill a thing so yeah like, it, it kind it, of had it, it basically had a little bit of a moba feel where you take over nodes and when you take over a node you could choose oh. what kind of and this and it may have evolved from that this is like think one of the problems they kept on trying to evolve and just never really releasing and selling on anything uh but right. initially what it was is you would you would go and you would take take over a node and that node uh you could spawn a specific kind of boss there it could be a boss it could be like a little boss that heals you it could be a boss that has range attack it could be cool, whatever uh, and so what you end up doing is having all these mini encounters as you move across the map while you try to take over these nodes. Uh, gotcha. And then once you get to a certain point, then you could spawn this big ass boss. And then you, you basically start to like trample all the way down the, 
uh, middle of the map or whatever. And then eventually everybody kind of after after a certain point, everyone gets clustered into the middle and it becomes just like a crazy like team deathmatch. Uh, like right. In, it was, it was, overall, it was actually really a fun game. Movement was awesome. Uh, combat felt good. All that stuff was great. They just could not settle on how they wanted their game to be played. Mm. And it just kept on like they just kept on. Uh, and, and then the way they did the whole like um, Xbox uh, or uh, Windows 10 only thing for a while. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember that, but they did a Windows 10. Basically, you had to have Windows 10 already play the game because it was on like the Windows 10 yeah. market or something else. Something really dumb associated with that, uh, which that obviously hurts when your game has no traction to begin with. Uh, yeah. And then they uh, they sold it to uh, Perfect World. They sold the entirety of Motiga to, to Perfect World. Um, <clears throat> and then Motiga, la- and then last year, Perfect World closed down Motiga. And so it's kind of like, I guess the game's just freaking out there floating now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it's been since November. It's just basically just out there, just, you know, doing whatever. Now they're just like, well, I guess we'll go ahead and close it down because nothing's happening to it. I feel like they had this great product and they let it rot. Mm. They let it rot. Right, it could have yeah, been a like- good game. From listening to you talk about it, like I, I obviously know way, way, way less about it, so I'm like, cast, I'm like hypothesizing, but it sounds like maybe it was a victim of too many transitions, even like it, you know, it seems like a lot happened to Matiga in that time, and maybe it just like it, every time you reorg or like change a company or get purchased or transferred, it's really hard to like maintain product velocity and like keep building stuff and keep changing stuff and keep iterating, and maybe it just fell victim to some of that as well. It also sounds kind of confused. Like to me, mm. listening to you talk about it, it sounds like someone trying to put five games in one game. Did it feel like that to play? No, that's the thing. It's like the initial, the initial again, I, I haven't played it after the first uh, four years of it being available. Um, so the, <laughs> the, the gameplay was, it was, it was relatively simple. Like you have, you have classes, right? you have tanks and you have DPS, you have range, all that good stuff. Um, and you just basically have uh, you, you just have those nodes that you have to go to conquer. It's, it's like when you play League and you have to take over towers. But imagine like instead of the towers disappearing and being gone, they uh, you, you could, the, your enemy can spawn a new tower in its place. It was that same kind of concept. They didn't have I don't think they had uh, any kind of like trash mobs or anything like that anywhere. Uh, I can't remember if they did or not, uh, but it was mostly about just taking over those nodes and progressing down the uh, uh, down the map so it, it, it overall was pretty simple i think it's, it maybe did get a little bit weird towards the end when it turns into like a death match in the middle um because then it's like okay do i take over the nodes or just like fight in the middle i don't say what's happening they did get kind of like a clusterfuck which in some <laughs> cases it's like ah, it's, it's exciting right but i guess i could see what you're saying it's like oh it sounds like it could be kind of confusing which could have been part of the problem yes absolutely <laughs> Yeah, like the fact that like I've I've never played it and I wasn't following it super closely, but the fact that you guys have been talking about it for like ten minutes now and I still have no idea what this game was <laughs> kind, of, <laughs> kind of a problem. Yeah. I, I'm not unfamiliar with video games either. So uh yeah. I mean to me it sounds like some sort of mashup of old school Alterac Valley with like a little bit of League of Legends and a little bit of Overwatch it in there, but not much. Not but... dissimilar to Ashran the game to me. Mm little bit yeah. maybe so yeah so that's what it was ashran came out and was a massive success that everyone loved and that everyone killed gigantic there you go. That <laughs> that's what you do yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 i think they're trying to do something unique by combining all these different things and nobody could liken it to anything else you know mm. like yeah. nobody was able to say oh it's 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 basically this they couldn't do that overwatch came out so yes yeah, team fortress 2 like and everyone's like okay i know what that is yeah. right they, were, they weren't saying it's team fortress 2 and league of legends and starcraft and whatever. like no it wasn't like that it was like no nah. yeah exactly it's like, uh, <laughs> it's like air mech remember trying to explain air mech to people and you're like, oh, oh yeah man. it's kind of like starcraft but it's also kind of like galaga but it's also kind of like League of Legends, but it's also kind of like you just sort of this going around. Thirty year old NES game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't remember the name of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like Air Mech was really fun and it's still mm-hmm. around. They they uh they came out with a, a decent enough um uh, model that they they were able to. I think it's still around anyway. Um, they were able to to keep it going. But yeah, yeah. do you know just just a little tip? Yeah, a little, a little uh, uh bonus tip here. They are actually one of the oldest games in uh Steam's early access program. Oh, Air Mac, they're still in early access. Oh, wow. I, the last I checked, which was a few months ago, but they were there for like five years. Last time I checked, I'm pretty sure they're probably still there. Uh, nice. Yeah, they were in early access. I'll actually pull it up right now and tell you. Wasn't it? It, is. it was like Prison Architect was the oldest one in early access. And then that released. They might actually be the oldest one in early access still. Yeah, here it is. Uh, November 8th, 2012, still labeled as early access. So, yep, there it is. 
<laughs> that is, that is, those 2012 people got some damn early access. Let yeah. me tell you that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Six yeah. years early. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I like Zep in the chat. They're going straight from early access to Steam Classics. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, another sort of delay that came this week, not a, not a, not a shutdown, fortunately, but, uh, another bit of news that's disappointed a lot of people is, um, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, um, which was originally a 2017 release, then got delayed to spring 2018. Now that we're about to hit spring 2018, they were like, Oh, actually, you know what? We meant October 2018 when we said spring. By spring, we meant late spring, <laughs> AKA October. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> really late spring. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's fortunately still coming, but they they've managed to sort of make themselves. Honestly, I actually think this was kind of a good move, just from a marketing perspective, because there were so many like game of the year contenders in 2018 or excuse me 2017 that now. Red Dead Redemption 2 doesn't have to go up against Breath of the Wild or <laughs> yeah, I was gonna Dragon say like <laughs> or PUBG or any of those things. Yeah, yeah. like no, we're the we're the game coming out in 2018. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, also like you know, I I'm still enjoying Horizon. Like I still I I've touched Breath of the Wild. Like I actually uh, Horizon Zero Dawn for Game of the Year. Um, I didn't like Breath of the Wild that much, but um, oh, I, would, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I think I might have killed Mike P with my words. Chat be nice. All, Chat be like, nice. <laughs> played all of seven minutes of Don't Starve, so Mike P and I obviously don't agree on games. That's fine. Um, but like, there's so many good games that are still like their longest like campaign single player games. Like, if I did like Breath of the Wild, that like ex- DLC just came out for it. There's still so much game kicking around of like crazy awesome games in 2017 that if I was Red Dead Redemption, I'd wait until everyone's like summertime play through all those games bored to tears like when will a good game come out october red dead redemption like that that actually that makes a bit of sense i just want to point this out everyone's like yeah Olivia no olivia tried. was right breath of the wild sucks so i think um, maybe they also that's because that's because totally for twitch or something <laughs> It's because your chat room it sucks <laughs> wow wow I'm wow. sure I'm wow. sure the I say that I say that but I know all these names. <laughs> I'm sure the YouTube comments on uh, on the VOD are going to just all be about how both me and Olivia are terrible people. I actually Better like back, Breath of the Wild. Back me way. up. Yeah. Back him up. It's a good game. Stop good game. Me, Make sure to like, comment, so subscribe, leave that chat below or I don't know how to do the YouTube thing anymore. <laughs> Leave that chat like, below. Like, what what is that? That's a, that's a streamer trying to like cross over. Yeah, leave leave that chat below. Did I say that? <laughs> yeah, the dragon <laughs> said, leave that chat below. <laughs> <laughs> leave that chat below. Thanks for all the yeah. subs. Yeah, Forbidden UK has got it. Like it's like you got to hit the bell now. I don't even know what that means. Like you got to hit the bell. People on the YouTube hit the bell. Whatever hit that means. Bell. Oh, oh yeah, the like, notification bell. Smash that bell. Oh, fuck. The notification thing is on every damn platform, even Instagram. People like post post like three or four story pages of like how to go through and t- turn on notifications for my stuff. You have to turn on notifications. I hate that. Sorry, I just hate that. It is. It is kind of dumb. But hey, I, smash that bell, though, guys. If I subscribe to a channel on YouTube, it's because bell. I like their stuff and I want to see it. Show it to me. Exactly. Right. This is enough of an indication that I want mm-hmm. the notifications. Surely. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> So another thing that both Paragon and Gigantic could have maybe considered um, is releasing on Switch because apparently everything that comes out on Switch is amazing and the Switch is like going crazy. This is actually really interesting news that um, Nintendo just announced this week. Um, Profits are up 261% over, not over, uh, uh, I believe that's over projections even as well. So like they were already expecting profits to go up and they just destroyed their profit uh, projections. Um, and here's the thing that I found really, really interesting, which is that in North America, the switch is actually at at this point in its lifespan, it's actually selling more than the Wii was at this point in its lifespan. It's actually outpacing the Wii. It's only in North America, but it's actually outpacing the Wii in North, not the Wii U. Everything outpaced the Wii U. <laughs> yeah, everything. <laughs> everything. Yeah. But the actual, yeah. the Wii, the, the console that got a million like the, you could you could argue that the Wii got a lot of people who were not gamers into gaming because it was like oh you get I get to wave my hands around that's crazy and then a week later they were sitting on the couch like 
I like to yeah. play it better this way. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bowling like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bowling. <laughs> And now I'm golfing. And now I'm making <laughs> hamburgers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I remember trying to get a Wii when it came out and it was hard. Like it was really difficult to get to find a Wii. I was at Best Buy like every day even from CompUSA because we wouldn't get it ever. Uh, yeah, and they, they, they just never had them in stock. Uh, the Switch is actually selling so quickly and so fast and getting so much uh attention i actually fear that there's gonna be this like backlash something's gonna happen and the internet's gonna fucking snap and just turn <laughs> against it it's like when something gets too popular and everyone all of a sudden is like oh god yeah tell me more about the switch well everything everything is a switch you would be really great with this glass of water switch be <laughs> awesome. like, and that's, it's gonna happen like there people are gonna start like for some reason rebelling against something because it's just getting so popular everyone's talking about it uh yeah but that being said, it is awesome. Mm. Yeah, it is very awesome. Yeah. Like, it's, I'm constantly, like, it, it, sorry, Josh, go ahead. I was going to say, it, it's, it's now easily my favorite console. And I own, like, what? We have, like, three PS4s now. Let's, oh, you let's guys. not talk about that. Let's not talk about the PS4s. You guys. I, I, I'll probably buy a fourth before you get back also. Um, <laughs> but... Um, we have one pro. We do only have one. See? See? And I oh, need one what? for the bathroom, obviously. Um, <laughs> we do also have two well, switches, however. I guess that's important. We need two switches. Well, we because you, two well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you guys travel, uh, the all traveling everything that happens is yeah. like, yeah, you have to. As currently yeah. exhibited by my presence here in the Twitch office in San Francisco, I travel a ton. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I now have a backpack big enough to carry a PS4 with me, though. So there's one rigged oh up in my God. hotel room right now. <laughs> so you need a travel PS4, obviously. <laughs> oh, I already man. have a travel PS4. No, but you need one that sits on your desk when you're not here, too. So that way you don't have to mess with the wire and stuff right yeah like, it is kind of a trial to unplug literally two things that is true <laughs> <laughs> no that's not the point uh, <laughs> but yeah you know, like with, with the switch like seriously i um there's so many games that i find and i'm like right i'm just gonna wait i'm just gonna wait and this is gonna come out on the switch i'm excited about this game but i'm just gonna wait and actually like a, a good recent example was ukulele um like i played the absolute shit out of banjo kazooie as a kid like i freaking loved that game so i was super psyched about ukulele and i know people didn't like it people also like breath of the wild people are wrong that's fine oh, wow um, <laughs> wow <laughs> So Shots. I'm like, but I loved, I loved ukulele, and I got ukulele on the PS4, and I was like, oh my god, my childhood, here we are again. There's like stupid puns and like fun jokes, and you're running around collecting things, and it's really fun. Um, but wait, when is this coming out on the Switch? And it came out on the Switch, and I bought it again, and I'm having a great time playing through it again. Like I'm just literally waiting for games to come out on the Switch because I know that means that I will definitely play them because I, I bring my Switch with me everywhere. If I'm on a plane, if I'm like in a anywhere where I'm going to be waiting for anything, I have a Switch with me, and I know that I will play those games. It's actually, I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts on this. It's actually replaced mobile phone games for me. Because I carry it with me all the time. I, I don't think I have downloaded or bought a mobile phone game since I bought my Switch. If they come out with Clash Royale on the Switch, it will. But until that happens... Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've never been much of a, uh, of a mobile game guy anyways. Um, so it's kind of like... It, if if I have my if I have my phone on me and I'm on a, I'm on the train or something I'll just listen to music or I'll just make music on one of the various apps or whatever. Um, but gaming is not something that I typically do on the phone, not anymore. Uh, mostly because like all the games I felt like we we're getting just it's like all like match threes for all this stuff and it was like okay I can't feel the controls I'm not gonna play match three or any <laughs> other, like, tower defense or some variation or evolution of tower defense and I was getting just tired of it. Uh, but now that I have a switch, I put that bitch everywhere, man. Like I put it even like when I'm working out, I'm not, I don't even feel like I'm really working out because like I, instead it's like, I'm, I'm on the elliptical, right. And you have the two arms on the elliptical, right. But I'm not, now I have the two wands in my hand. I'm like this, <laughs> oh and I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, so I'm not even really getting any resistance up here. I'm just kind of like just playing dark, like a darkest style? dungeon like this. <laughs> Is that like a Wii style running game for the switch that you know, like I'm playing darkest dungeon, dude. but I'm for some reason still moving my arms. Cause I'm trying to exercise, Literally, I guess. Arms would be a great game for that. Yes. 
Oh, okay. Like walking and punching punch, and stuff. Punch, 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 punch. <laughs> yeah. Someone it's gets like, like, why is this guy just constantly punching the walls? <laughs> and you're just, like, <laughs> just breathing. Yeah. And then you've got to like go really fast to do a special or like do one and then wait. You're just like paused on the elliptical, like, what? <laughs> yeah no it's it's uh it, it's it goes just about everywhere with me uh because there's just so many different things you can do and then you know there's uh there's like hulu on it right now and eventually we'll probably get netflix and hopefully soon like amazon video and then you know what it might just replace the whole fucking tv like yeah. right now it's like you know the tv just runs uh, uh we just have running what is it uh, uh amazon amazon fire thing right um but if the switch does all that and I, the switch is, you know, if I park it downstairs, like, well, there it is. It's a TV. Like we don't even need Amazon TV, whatever anymore. Just done. Yeah. Like, it, it has a browser. Like it's kind of a, it's not the world's greatest browser. I don't think, but it, I believe it has a browser. Um, and like, hmm. I, you know, we need to just get everything on the switch. Like let, let's, let's start spamming them on the Twitter. That's like I do said, the thing. here with me, but within arm's reach almost all the time. I'll look to see <laughs> like, this yeah, browser like, here. <laughs> not having it with me and i'm like where's my switch oh yeah it's in my hotel room yeah when are we when are we yeah, doing I, twitch on the switch olivia you know what i was literally just thinking that i should ping the console guys and be like <laughs> what, what are you doing twitch on the switch yeah twitch switch twitch twitch i mean it rhymes switch, Get on with it. switch twitch switch or sorry twitch <laughs> switch yeah mm. switch switch yeah switch. you guys yeah. can call it switch no oh, man that's crazy. That's good. Just put them together. Switch put the words like together. You're in charge of naming things. I'm good at that stuff. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's insane. I'm like, I, I'm not surprised at all. Like, I am just like to hear that the Switch is doing that well, to hear that it's outpacing the Wii, just not surprised. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's getting tons and tons of indie games now too, which I'm super excited about because like I, I'm sort of the same way that you were talking about earlier, Olivia, where like um I will I, there are a lot of games that I I, I picked up because I was excited to play them. Um, and then I never played them that much like darkest dungeon, which I've now been playing a whole bunch on, uh, mm-hmm. on the switch. Um, I'm super excited that uh crypt of the necro dancer just today came out on the switch. Uh, so I will be, I will be purchasing that immediately after this show so that I can play. I wonder that. if there's some like capacity for B to be doing necro dancer on the elliptical, Ooh. like some a necro dancer, rhythmic elliptical training. Mm. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. That is a good idea. <laughs> I mean, I've just been playing that stupid milk and milk on the cow game while I was working out. So it's, I was milking the shit out of that one. Woo! It's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's great that it's become such a great platform for indie games. And now um, there's a there's a group of people that have been working on basically jailbreaking it. Um, and last I heard, they were really close, so that like third party developers would start being able to do things with the uh, with the hardware. I'm really excited to see what the combination of that. I think I was talking about this on DigiHu a while back. The combination of jailbreaking the Switch plus the new um, uh, Nintendo uh, Labo, uh, whatever it's called, Labo, not Labia, whatever it's actually called. <laughs> I was going to say, I was, I was waiting. I was like, is he going to call it what we called it or no? <laughs> That's the name of the product. Um, but like, just don't listen to that episode, Olivia. <laughs> yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I, I even become inured to bad words owning Twitch chat as I do. Yeah, they. Yeah, oh, wow. God, wow. <laughs> There's nothing both I can us, say. Both of us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> nothing shocking anymore. No. The uh, yeah, if they could get. So right now there's there's an app called Rainway that they have been talking to Nintendo trying to get them to to approve their app or whatever. Um, and Rainway is uh, it basically functions like Steam Steam Link. Where you could stream games from your uh, from your uh, PC to uh, to the Switch, um, and if they can get that on there, whether via Homebrew or whatever, I will pretty much like never have to buy another game for the Switch <laughs> except for except for like exclusives. Because right now there's a number of indie games that I have on there that I already have on PC, uh, and it's because you know I like I have Darkest Dungeon on PC. I have like five minutes played. Uh, Darkest Dungeon on Switch, I have like five hours played because I just felt like that was a better platform for it, despite my complaints about the controls and all that. Um, but still, it's like there. If, if we can get Rainway, suddenly I have or Steam Link or some kind of way of of, of uh, mm. sending that. I, I'll have 700 games or whatever, like on the uh, uh, on the Switch, and so then I feel like just that alone, will, people will buy just at least the hardware. Yeah, like I yeah. I own a PS Vita purely for PS4 Link. 
so that I could play Destiny with uh, just wherever. Um, one if of I you, can, one of our PS4s will work. One with of it. our, yeah, one of our <laughs> PS4s. Yeah. Um, I, I have the Vita so that that way I don't have to go to one of the PS4s because occasionally they're <laughs> slightly out of reach and uh, oh God. it's a little inconvenient. Um, <laughs> 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 oh man oh god but no it's the same thing like i literally i was looking uh i i saw like we were talking with the the indie game announcement and i was like oh man what indie games are on the switch um and i i went through that list i was like i found a little like cool little side scrolling list on google and i was like oh man like Gorogoa is a great little puzzle game that i bought on steam like i will not hesitate to buy it again and i think i guess that's part of the reason why if i was nintendo i'd be looking to block any kind of a steam link app because they must be seeing if they could gather that data from steam and be like okay we can reasonably confirm that this olivia over here on steam is this olivia over here on switch Huh, she's buying games she already owns. <laughs> and giving us all of these additional dollars. Like I will abs- like Gorogoa is a game that I really enjoy. It's really fun. It's kind of funky and weird. It's a weird puzzle game, which is my favorite kind of puzzle game. And I'm just like, yeah, I, I will 100% buy that on Switch when we're done with this stream. I-, I will be playing that on Switch this evening, even though I've played through half of it on PC already. Like it it's a different yeah. enough gameplay experience as well for me that I find it fun all over again. But if they release Horizon Zero Dawn, on Switch, I will buy that game. That'll I will buy the never game. happen. No, it will never happen. It will literally never happen. It's just like my personal pipe dream of like super portable Horizon Zero Dawn because I love that game. Should have been game of the year. It it made Breath of the Wild happened. There are there are other. Um, it's actually in the running for the um, DICE awards or Dice awards. Are they the ones that matters? Obviously, like, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Unless yeah. unless it doesn't win, in which case none of them matter. In which case, uh, none of them matter. They're all wrong. <laughs> They actually, um, they actually asked me. Uh, I, I got to be one of the people that uh, that helped pick the uh, the dice awards. One of the people that voted on on who wins. So, oh wow! Uh, I'm not gonna say what I voted for though, because that's a what? Bad idea. It's on politics. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell in a private booth with a ballot paper. Like, like I'll wait for I'll wait for when we do the ep- partially because I don't really remember what I voted for, but I'll wait for until we do the episode where we inevitably talk about the dice awards. <laughs> those websites where you have like 86,000 questions and roughly a million checkboxes and you just like lose interest in general life when you get towards no, the end. You're just no, like, they, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. they actually had it narrowed down to like five choices for each category and you had to pick one of them. It was it was four or five choices for each category and you had to pick one of them. That's um, not so bad. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty decent. Uh, they're, at this point, they're at the, we've already narrowed it down to one of these, let's ask 500 people what they think sort of thing. So, um, yeah. yeah. So the Switch is doing really well. The game that I want to see come out on the Switch so I can buy it again is Subnautica. Yes. Fish. <laughs> that game, Fish. This it kind of came out of nowhere because like like me, I, I went to, I, I saw people streaming it all of a sudden. I was like, oh, what what's this Subnautica game? And it was like, oh yeah, it just had a full release. It just came out of, uh, it came out of early access. And I was like, oh, cool. Maybe I'll check it out. It looks kind of interesting. It went to my Steam library and I'd owned it since February. Yeah, <laughs> I bought this nice. at some point and it had gone from my mind entirely, but it's it's nice. it's a lot of fun. It's uh, I think I recommended both of you to check it out. Um, yeah, I actually saw I actually saw Soda Pop and streaming it of all hmm. people. I was like, hey, uh, like, what's this fish game? Like, I, I was just like looking at something and I'm like, what the hell is this? Um, like, and I saw Soda Pop and streaming it and I jumped into the game directory to be like, oh, who else is streaming this? And there was so many people streaming it. I'm like, okay, I have to check this out. Um, and it's so much fun. And actually, Mike B, aka Phony, aka Mike B, aka whatever you call yourself these days, I have a question for you, which is why the hell is your Twitch notification jumping into Subnautica instead of diving into Subnautica? Get it says, it said, it said <laughs> diving. It said diving. For ages. It's Check the word. It says, I may have changed it after the fact because the someone mentioned it. Not the title, the notification. Well, I can't control no live this, notification. I, I think that I didn't notify. Oh, the go live notify. I don't put anything yeah. in there. It Where says is this? jumping into Subnautica, and I'm just like, B, it B does, I, get your I, shit together. I, I'm I'm a new dad. All right, I've only been doing this for five <laughs> years. I'm trying. I'm trying. God. No, it's it's. Uh, sorry, Olivia. Uh, <laughs> That's right. uh, so I played it. I played it when it first came out, which might be the reason why you own it, Josh. Um, Probably. I, I played it when it first came out and I made a video about it for the VR uh, side of it. VR side of it is 
is is it's it still needs some work. You can't use the wand's controller base. Uh, and if you've played the game, can you imagine playing that in VR where it's like just the constant movement and the water and everything? It's very nauseating. Um, <clears throat> especially and, and it's not even so much the movement; it's the frame hitches that they still need to resolve. Like whenever you come out of the water, every once in a while, pretty much almost every time, there's like a couple frames missing for some reason. Like as it transitions from like underwater to above water, uh, anytime you go near certain things, I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, you get mass of like frame hitches here and there uh and in vr that kills you like that is Mm. like that is the worst thing um so the vr stuff was like i was really excited i was like yeah this this could be amazing but at the same time it was like uh but i'm gonna throw up every time i play so never mind Uh, yeah but so i i shelved it because it was a game that was like yeah it's a survival game that's great people are doing all this stuff or whatever you know uh i'll wait for vr to get better and then all of a sudden like you said olivia you guys it was like all of a sudden everyone's playing it um and Chisel started playing it. And I was like, whatever, I played that a year ago. Uh, and Chisel was like, no, but you got to play the story. It's great. And, you know, they added all this stuff, whatever. And I was like, fine. So I did. And, uh, and I've been playing it. And it is awesome. Yeah, like, it is. They really, really, like, they spaced out all of the stuff that happens in games. So it feels like you're paced almost perfectly. I think I'm like 20 something days in or something. And the, the way that they've delivered content and the way that they've kind of spread out these markers and checkpoints where it's like, OK, you need to go check out this thing. Well, I don't necessarily have to go right away, but whenever I do, that's going to trigger like the next event in like another day or two. So it gives you time to, you know, scavenge your resources or explore yeah. or whatever you want. Yeah, it's a it's a really good um, it's a it's a model that we've seen in games before, but not so much in like an open world survival exploration sort of game as much. It actually reminds me a lot of, incidentally, of Steam World Dig, um, which um, Olivia and I were talking about just before we started the show, um, because that was a game where like you you know you dig down, you go down a little bit, and you find some like resources or whatever, and you go back up to the top, and you're like, aha, now I can build a better shovel or whatever. You dig back down a little yeah. bit more. Now I can make elevator shafts, and you keep going down. And as you go down, like eventually you hit these sort of points where it's like, oh. And you've reached a point now where a little bit of story happens and you're like, Ooh, Mm -hmm. so wait, if I dig a little bit more, I can find out what that was about. Oh, I'm going to keep digging. And so like Subnautica, like those open world survival games, like Ark for me was a game that trying to play, obviously I've done a lot of, a lot of Ark um, RP at this point. That's kind of like, that's making a game out of Ark for me because the base game is, it's just not for me really. It's uh, it's a little bit grindy and a little bit dull. But in Subnautica, you, you're doing basically the same thing. You're going out, gathering resources, coming back, building stuff, going out, gathering resources, coming back, building stuff. Um, you're just sort of exploring around the entire time. But every time you do that, there's like a, a solid chance that you'll get a bit of story or something. And it's going to be like, Ooh, mm-hmm. this, this ship is contacting me now whatever, or whatever. And it's like, um, it, it's really interesting how they managed to pace it all out that way. And it keeps you sort of coming back over and over and over again. Um, I think it's really, really well done. Um, and it's uh, they've done the exploration role. I actually didn't even realize that the the world is procedurally generated either. I was like, oh, man, it's going to be interesting to see when people speed run this because I found this thing over here. And I'm sure that the first thing they're going to do is immediately run over here and gather this resource and then go back to their place. But no, it's actually fully, fully randomized. Yeah, it seems that way. I mean, like based on, you know, you watching me play yeah. and me watching others play, it seems really different where my it might uh, it might also be that the world is generated and then your pod, your survival pod is like your life. What do they call it? The like little escape pod. Yeah. Like the life pod or whatever. Differently for different players. Yeah. So that's, that's probably why it feels like it's different or it's procedurally generated because it's, it's it's not. So what happens is your life pod lands in like a different spot, depending on, you know, your, your playthrough. Uh, But in general, it's kind of in the same rough area because like where I landed, uh, apparently I'm near to something like this thing that other people are like, whoa, it's like right below his pod. It's like, yeah, it is. It's like, oh, I didn't find that until like later. Uh, but for the most part, it is um, it is handcrafted, uh, which that in today's you know, d- you know gaming you know, day and age, that is all amazing. Because if as you're swimming through and you're checking all these like, you know, these caverns and these uh, just just like the all the details, and everything, then you realize that it's it's like that's a lot of work that went into it. Hmm. Um it is a, I mean, it's, 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 it's so expansive. Like there's, I haven't reached the part where I've like hit like an invisible wall yet. And I feel like I've swam in each direction for like a kilometer, which takes a good amount of time, yeah. you know? Uh, and yeah, it's just, it's really, yeah. It's really, uh, Desolated Maggot in chat says, world is set, but placement of things is randomized. 
So mm-hmm. it might actually, I mean, I, I I haven't played far enough through the game. Like I, I haven't restarted yet. Like I've only played through it once. I'm having so much fun. I think the biggest issue I have with the game, as anyone who's watched me streaming it recently will have seen, is that I get completely distracted by pretty fish. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm apparently like, little magpie for cool looking fish and like i have no like mental i i i I have been a qualified scuba diver since i was 16 like i love being underwater i just i i think i i am happiest when i'm like snorkeling or scuba diving i just love it so much and so i'm just like swimming around perfectly happy i think i drowned like i don't even know eight times (laughs) before i crafted anything because i'm just like she's she's just immediately following i'm a a licensed scuba diver (laughs) i I must have drowned so many times. <laughs> the student's like you yelling at you too. It's like, you know, you're about to drown. You should quit staring at that fish, Olivia. You're about to Yeah, drown. it tells you. Swim up. Yeah, like, it exactly. Everything. Like, I was saying it in my chat. We're all like, oxygen, you're drowning. You're drowning. And I'm just like, oh, hi, fish. Oh, hi, fish. It's just like, That's and funny. I saw one. I was swimming. I wanted to go look at the, the, uh, the like, the down boat. The, the, the big uh, spaceship or ship, whatever yeah. it is that you yeah. see. Like, this isn't spoilers because it's like the first freaking thing the you first see. first thing, yeah. Yeah. And so I was swimming towards that and I hadn't, I hadn't built an oxygen tank. I hadn't built my fins. I hadn't built a rebreather. I hadn't built, it was just me in my like zero sum first day on this new planet. I'm like, oh, let's go look at that big spaceship. That looks cool. <laughs> oh, a fish. Oh, a fish. Drowned. Okay, back again. Oh, a fish. Oh, a fish. Keep swimming. And then <laughs> I was <laughs> swimming towards the front end of this giant ship and I I'm like going along and I'm like, whoa, wow, that's a really big fish. Let's go check him out. And my chat's like, no, don't do it. And I'm like, no, no, it's okay. I won't, I won't drown because I'll stay there on the surface. I'll swim along, I'll swim along the top, guys. It's going to be fine. And this fish was just like, sup, boom, one shot. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was cool. I don't know. It, it looked like a sort of like a skeleton face on the front of a real big eel. I don't know. What oh, yeah, and they have like the things, the things. Yeah, the... yeah like the sort of. I, man, I, 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 was, I was fighting one today. Like You're fighting one? Oh, well, man. I try to I try to ram it with my little like submersible, right? And it just it just basically grabbed it and like started like started taking off with me in it. And so I pulled out the knife and I was like, I'll settle this right now. So I jumped out and I started <laughs> straight hacking at it for like five I minutes. With the knife. And, yeah, I was. I tried so and like I was like pulling blood out. I was like, yeah, I'm hacking this. And then like it turned around and it started coming at me. And I was like, yeah, let's bring it. I'm stabbing in the face and he ate me. And that was pretty much it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I did that with one of the like one of the real like long nose like barracuda looking ones. Like I'm getting on, on the weed bit. I'm getting my weeds for my stuff to make my fiber whatever it was and my uh-huh. other th- things. And it's just like this mean fish is just like yeah 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 I'm gonna bite you. I'm like no you're getting shanked. <laughs> 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 I'm just like swimming around like and then I, and then obviously because I distracted <laughs> trying to shank this dab rude fish I drowned. who has the last word (laughs) oxygen has the my feeble body (laughs) my frailty has the last word it turns out but yeah it's a really really fun game i have to say like someone uh who was it in chat saying it uh big fear of open water guns games in chat um a bunch of people have like pitched it to me as a scary game like a bunch of people were like, oh man, you know, so you might like this because I know you love survival games and I know you like like mildly scary games, like not like jump scares because I just get bored. Like I'm yeah. not super susceptible to jump scares. So I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Freddy, whatever. I don't know. Um, and I just find them ah. boring, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, eh. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm not, I'm not one of those people who's super entertaining to watch because I'm just like jump scare. Okay, um, but this one, everyone was like, "Oh, it's scary! It's scary!" And part of the reason why I got it was because people were like it's scary, and I'm like, I have, I have felt literally none of this promised fear, none. I'm still loving the game so much, but it is not. It, if you had a fear of open water, I can totally understand why you would find it scary. Like this would be super scary, but I, I don't know. But I don't know about you guys, but I have not been remotely frightened at any point while playing this game. <laughs> I did. Um, I had one point. I haven't played it as much as either of you at this point, by the way, despite having recommended it to both of you guys. I just haven't gotten around to playing it that much more <laughs> uh, because I'm, I'm, done. I'm probably going to play it more tonight after the show. Um, <laughs> Oh. Shank a fish for us. But I might play mm-hmm. Necro Dancer instead. Anyway, um, uh, so I, I had a point um, really early on. Yeah, I, I was uh, similar. I was going over to explore the um, uh, the the down ship right away. Um, and I, I'd built some stuff so that I could get over there and not be like radiated and whatever. 
Um, and I was like, oh, this is cool. Oh, and like there's a little bit of land that pops out here. That's kind of cool. I'll walk around on that. Oh, there's a chest or something down there. And then all of a sudden I just like something comes out of the shadows behind me and bites me. And I'm just sitting there going, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. <laughs> it's like yeah. as fast as I possibly can. Like pulling out my little like diving uh, engine thing. It's like. <laughs> yeah, I have that sort of like. I, I jump at jump scares, but they don't really scare me. I just like, oh, that was startling. Like, that's about it. But that sort of like existential, oh, my God, something that I can't look at is sca- is chasing me right now. That's like, <laughs> like, that's that's yeah. super uh, that, that gets me really, really. So that maybe that's what people are talking about when they, they call it like a scary game is because oftentimes things will come after you and you can't really like you can run from them, but you can't tell how successful you're being at running from them. So yeah, because I'm just like, turn around. Uh, I might die. <laughs> hoping it's like Diego 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 come on come on come on <clears throat> but the music seems really unassociated with you actually being murdered by something mm. too because like I think you know we've all played a ton of games and you get used to this pattern that like certain music shifts mean something is going down like you you've mm-hmm. got to make a change in your actions like you're being attacked blah 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 but in this game it's just like doo, 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 gonna look at a fish gonna mine some oh god why is there music okay <laughs> FTL soundtrack. I actually, I did that. I, I did that. Actually, I had the FTL soundtrack running in the background for the boot of the stream, and I think I left it on like while I was playing. And then I realized I was like, "Oh no, hey, no, that's that's." I, I, I thought I left it on, but it was the actual in-game soundtrack. And I was like, "Oh, it's because it's basically like if you listen to it, it's super similar to some of the tracks." But yeah, like you get chased by something, and it's like you expect once you engage with something, it's like, "Oh, bring out the tribal drums!" <laughs> and it's like, "Okay, here we go." Now it's getting crazy. Now yeah. it's still it's like, do, 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 do. It's like FTL yeah. style. I mean, there's some there's some sounds that you still hear nowadays that immediately, like at least for me, immediately send me into a panic. Like, um... <laughs> this should play. This should be. This should be what plays. <laughs> That should be what plays in uh, in Subnautica when you're about to drown. It should just come in with the Sonic the Hedgehog drowning music. Yeah, I, I would I would swim to the surface if I heard that music. <laughs> oh, God, like, oh, that's what it takes. That's what it takes. <laughs> yeah. So like, like, if I ever go diving again, I'm gonna take some headphones with me that are waterproof and just put that on them. It's gonna yeah. work. So what you guys saying is it was gonna be a Fell Reaver sound. They need a contract like a, a DJ, right? That's what they need. Like a DJ, something that knows the crowd. It's like, oh yeah, in this moment I would drop this track. Like that's what they would do. Like you need like an actual DJ to actually tell them where to put these tracks because clearly it's not working. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a really, it's such a fun game though. I'm like, I'm having a, uh, I was, uh, fish jokes, I'm having a whale of a time. <laughs> I just want to, um, I want to, we're going to move on. But I want to real quick, there was a there was a clip that um, someone shared to me of someone playing this game that I thought was is really, really important to the core Subnautica experience um, <coughs> that I want to go ahead and uh, and play for you guys here real quick, because personally, I think it's great. This is one of the best clips oh, no? No? of anyone me, ever playing Subnautica. Why not? No. Oh. That I should go get water and put it in. It's got water in it. Trying to put a fish in the, the fish tank. This is a dumb. Oh, it's a this is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. I thought it was pretty funny. I just oh wanted an opportunity God. to try. I forgot that I cooked it. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you ever done that? Haven't you ever done that? I mean, I've just gone to the pet store, come back home, cook up the fish you just bought. Then you never like the fish you never tank. like grilled up a steak and then like threw it in the backyard and wondered the next day why I have <laughs> like, yeah, you never like, I have milk. Where's the what's going on? I had? What's going on? <laughs> no one's ever done that, huh? Just me. Just you, man. Just you. Yeah, I accidentally a... cooked my pets. Shit, <laughs> again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just wanted an opportunity to troll. That's basically Thanks. all I've been doing this show anyway, <laughs> just trolling people. Uh, speaking of trolling people, um, so Elon Musk, I'm, I'm convinced at this point that he's just... He's just trolling people like literally with the whole like, uh, no, totally. You guys, we live in a simulation like he's he's literally just like anyone will believe anything that I say. Uh, so uh, I, I'm, I'm 100 percent convinced that he's just trolling people right now. And part of the reason for that is that, you, you know, his uh, boring company, right? The, the company that yeah. he made to 
Um, they're, they're creating like these big machines that make tunnels underground really quickly so that people can build like metros and stuff much faster or things like metros much faster. Um, well, for some reason, that company decided to release a flamethrower um, <laughs> because, of course, you release a flamethrower as a promotional <coughs> thing. And they, they actually sold this. They actually sold. You can see right here. Twenty thousand of these flamethrowers have now been pre-ordered. They actually exist. They actually work. These are a real thing that uh, that Elon Musk has decided to make for some reason. And th there isn't much of a topic there, but what? <laughs> I guess the sort of the core of that is why. I feel like people <clears throat> legitimate. Like, so he tweeted that he wasn't starting a zombie apocalypse to accelerate sales of flamethrowers, and I, among many, was kind of concerned that actually is you he needed to clarify that like, is Elon <laughs> Musk's droid army coming to get us and he's just like pre is this like is this like an alien versus predator but it's all like this is like the real predator situation where it's just orchestrated by Elon Musk and he's just like putting the human race at the test by releasing flamethrowers into a market and in like a few years time he's going to release zombies from one of his tunnels like what is is he living in an alternate reality is he the overlord I'm terrified of Elon Musk it's kind of ridiculous he is he is, I think, just basically the boring company toilet paper merchandise away from being space balls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like they've got the shirts, they've got the flamethrowers. Uh, there's probably an Elon Musk plush or something out there. Uh, if they get some toilet paper out there, then, you know, like this is th these are the signs, guys. Like this is this is based like they're an evil mega corporation yeah. <laughs> that is, evil mega corp that is masquerading Robert. around as a bunch of morons. Yeah. And so it's this is this is what's going to happen. Oh, my gosh. The E and E Corp from Mr. Robot, like you're saying, it must stand for Elon. It's Elon. Elon. Oh, oh man. We they knew the whole time. Elon Corp. <laughs> They did. They did know the whole time. So I think what I'm most curious about, apart from like whether he's trying to trying to kill us with zombies, like a sort of humans versus zombies, like IRL game thing, is what was he fundraising for? Because like he's very, very <laughs> open on the website. Like they're they're overpriced. He made a huge amount of money from them reselling these things. He sold what he sold like made he sold ten twenty thousand of them. Yeah, he made ten million in four days. Why did he need ten million dollars? <throat> That's that to me is the real question. Is what does he because do? Because he mean? could. But right, but like you're Elon Musk, you're like you're you're digging holes underground to make traffic go faster. You're sending spaceships into the I don't even know. You're sending like cars on to, spaceships. He wants. He <laughs> said he's very open that he's like I want. I don't want to die on Earth. I want to die on Mars. And I'm like, well, go to Mars in a spaceship right now. We, that could be arranged. Um, <laughs> but it's just like you know, it, it, what is he doing with that money? Is to me the far more interesting question than why was he selling flamethrowers? Like, what's on his mm. mind that he needed ten million dollars for in a hurry? Yeah, I mean, he started with PayPal and then he made yeah. Tesla and then he made or no, then he made SpaceX and then he made Tesla. And yeah. it's recently, by the way, become revealed that it's called SpaceX because it sounds like space sex. Like, that's why they chose that name specifically <laughs> is because he thought it would be funny. So obviously this guy is a troll. Like, obviously this dude is is used to trolling people. So, um Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Car Car one Carlito. Let's say that's Carlito. One, start zombie apocalypse. Two, fly to Mars. Three, mer for profit. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Not maybe. Unfeasible. Maybe. Uh, maybe flamethrowers work better on Mars or something. Maybe there's something. Not I don't know how a flamethrower would possibly Mars work on Mars. <laughs> there are twenty thousand flamethrowers now. <laughs> I extra flamethrowers now in circulation for whatever reason oh, for whatever know. reason They're like probably bought by tech bros in the bay area as if we didn't have enough trouble with fires around here yeah. Jesus. <laughs> i know how long Elon until Musk. how long until one of them is used in like an actual crime too how long until someone robs a bank with a fucking boring company <laughs> flamethrower or something right because I mean, you show up his website like the Sorry, thing, yeah. it looks it looks like some sort of like space gun. Like this looks like straight yeah. out of Halo. Like, <laughs> that is the sort of thing that if you show up with that at a uh, at a bank, everyone who's there is going to be like, "Is this a laser cannon? What's going on?" <laughs> and then like you you pull the trigger and flames start appearing. People are like, "What?" It's yeah, like, give me all the money, or I will burn it all. That's just it's good. Yeah. I mean, he also says on the website, well, I, 
the website implies that they're purchasable elsewhere for less. So I don't think that he is wholly to blame for the circulation of flamethrowers. Although, man, he did some pretty sweet promo for flamethrowers recently. Like, I have to admit, that prior to this juncture, I wasn't fully aware that you could buy a flamethrower as a general market consumer. I had assumed <laughs> that those would be somewhat regulated in some way or other. Uh, it's really not. Wrong. It's a, it's, a gray, it's a gray area with the NRA. It's what it is. It's a gray area with the NRA. It's like if it benefits us, then maybe we'll go ahead and support it. If not, then whatever, you know? Yeah. 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 I actually wasn't aware that you could buy them in this form. I was just like, oh, I, I still felt like you needed a backpack because of like every Wolfenstein game I've ever played. They all had yeah. backpacks. So I was like, that's just the way it is. Why would they ever evolve the a flamethrower tech? It's, it's, it's dumb tech. Why would they ever evolve it? Well, never mind. They have. Now it's all handheld. It's yeah. perfect. Yeah, there you go. It's I, crazy. And it also is, it, I, I also wonder then, is the duration of flamethrowing of this flamethrower drastically lower than what is it like those Dyson handheld hoovers that they first released? And you're like, man, this lasts for like 10 minutes. I need to vacuum my whole house. This mm. is bullshit. And you're like, man, I need to burn all these. <laughs> what is even a legitimate thing that you would need to burn? So Someone, I need uh, to burn my entire house. This money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With this. Someone was saying, because we were talking about it um, the other day, Shizzle and I were playing uh, PUBG and we were talking about it, and someone uh, was saying that their family in Australia uses them for like clearing out brush or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. like burning ahead so that you like, you're, it's kind of a fire prevention tactic. So yeah. you like burn out all the stuff that would catch fire if there was a bushfire. So you make a fire break basically. Or maybe um, there's a million actually, deadly spiders in it and you just decide you don't want anything to do with it Especially in Australia, yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, Hogwai <clears throat> in chat says that this flamethrower falls into the legal limit. Flame can't exceed three feet. More than mm -hmm. that and it's considered military grade. Yeah, I was wondering about that. That that might be what the backpack is for. If you're actually like spraying essentially napalm out of the flame. Ah, uh, okay. But okay. this thing, this thing is just it's just a big long. flame. It's basically it's it's one of those like little um, grill lighter things, but the flame is about three feet. Three so feet it functions about as about as well as like every shotgun in every video game ever made. Then <laughs> yeah, the three feet range, and then after I that, mean, it's just, I yeah. would if someone came into this meeting room at twitch hq right now wielding a flamethrower i i would be scared i would be like yeah no uh, bye i'm gonna leave <laughs> through the window i guess like, Just stay three feet ahead three and a half feet yeah, ahead you're yeah. good yeah, there you go. yeah that's plenty three foot of flames there's plenty of flames for me in a built up area thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> Guns yeah. game says it's a really large crème brûlée. I think that would be the only like reasonable. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> really big, like a bathtub of crème brûlée. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like a, a like idea. a portable pool things. Yeah. yeah. Kitty pools. <laughs> All right. Well, it is unfortunately just about time for us to wrap up here, but we do have one more piece of business to work through and that is we need a name for this episode. Um, and the way we do that here on the Famous Internet Famous show is we ask chat room because we have good ideas. I don't mm -hmm. know if this is one of them, but we do have good ideas sometimes. So, uh, exactly. chat room, we need your uh, we need your suggestions. What what should we call this episode? Of uh, <laughs> make it good. That's right, I support that. No, yeah. smash that bell. <laughs> smash that bell. I like smash that bell. Is good. Jumping into some Nordica. No, we're not calling it that. Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Internet famous, the flamethrower. <laughs> we skipped a we skipped a whale of a time. Mm. Whale of a time I liked a lot. I think that was a good one. Whale of a time, yeah. I hit record. They, re this they time. really want to put your name into this. They Smash really that motherfucking bell button. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, really, I'm enjoying Smash That Bell and a Whale of a Time pretty uh, quite a lot. All right, we'll put it between those two then. I think. Right. What do you think, Josh? Smash that bell or a whale of a time. I yeah. kind of feel like Smash That Bell personally. That sounds good. Smash that smash that bell. All right, yeah. smash that, it's smash good, that it's bell. A good, uh, it's a good call to action for our for our YouTube YouTube watchers as well. <laughs> Leave a chat that, below. I'll have to put the bells in between every word too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. perfect. Good yes. job, Wolfie. I like so that. You've got that. All right, smash <laughs> that as bell. Much as like chat, I, I know I was right. I know. <laughs> yeah. Michael catch on eventually. He'll he'll figure it out. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh man. All right. Well, on that note, it is time for us to wrap up this show. Olivia Grace, thank you so much for being our guest host here Thanks on the second you. episode. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anything in particular that you want to shout out uh, before we close out the show? Probably chat. Uh, yeah, thanks, chat. You guys are my favorite, literal favorite humans on the literal internet. <laughs> yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Olivia D. Grace. Uh, follow me on Twitch at Olivia. But yeah, other than that, thanks for having me. It's been a blast. 
Awesome. And Mike B, a.k.a. Phony, as per usual, uh, what do you got going on this week in the interwebs, Mr. Mike B? Playing some Nautica, doing lots of photo shoots. I am beat. I'm going to go to sleep tomorrow, photo shoot all day, and sleep some more probably. And that's it. All right. All right. And I have been Josh Allen, a.k.a. Double Or, your uh, what passes for a host around here, doing my best to push the buttons. You have the jacket, so that's all that matters. You have a jacket. Yeah, I'm the I'm the best dressed on the be- with my Mario T-shirt and jacket. <laughs> um, you can follow me on Twitter at Devilor. You can follow me on Twitch at Devilor. If you've been watching this live, uh, you can smash that bell. I guess is the the term that we have to use for this now. Smash that <laughs> bell. <laughs> yeah, like like my, yeah. Say like so you say like my dad says smash that. That bell. What do you call it now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, remember, you can also check out all of our uh, previous episodes on Mike B's. Which way are you? YouTube that channel. One. Mike B's YouTube Smash channel. Smash that. Oh, no, always the wrong way with this. Smash oh, I'm over here. Right here. Yeah. This way. Is that way. Smash, smash it. AK Mike B. Smash it. Yeah. Smash it. Smash it. YouTube.com slash AK Mike B. Go smash that bell as well. And if you're just looking for more bells to smash, you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. <laughs> Twitter.com slash IntFamous and uh, Facebook.com slash IntFamous as well. Anyway, uh, thanks again for hanging out, everybody. Um, And that's going to be it for us for this week. Bye.